I know you, I can feel you with the green of soul. Listening room. Thanks for joining me today, you guys. Subscribe to the channel. Hit that bell notification. Like the channel for the content. Oh, you guys. Wonderful to see all of you today. Absolutely love you guys. Thank you again. All right. So, my guest today is uh, a songwriter. He's been writing some songs on the guitar lately, but he's traditionally been a keyboardist for bands like uh, Head P.E., Half Ton and Rooster, and uh, good to have on the show uh, one of my one of my wonderful friends, uh, one of my longtime uh, bandmates, Mr. Kenny Sachs. How you doing, Ken? Doing all right. Good. Good Chilling. to good to see you, man. Yeah. So good to see you. you were you were out of commission for a little while recently. What happened? Oh, I had to have some neck surgery. Too much head banging when I was younger, I guess. Word. Yep. Is that really got it? Some, got some discs. No, that wasn't it. <laughs> I was in a car accident a while ago and never got it checked out and didn't know I was hurt. Started hurting. Fingers started oh, really? going numb. Yeah. Your fingers started going numb? Was that like the first sign like of yeah, that there was, was something wrong? Yeah, your house. Oh, That's I remember that. We were playing. You brought the bass over, right? Yeah, we're, I was playing bass and I was like, damn, my fingers feel weird. And I thought it was just because I was rusty. No kidding. And didn't go away. Finally went to a doctor, and they're like, you have nerve damage. Went through the old x-rays and MRIs, and they said, you're hurt. Were you in a car accident? I said, well, actually, it was rear-ended three times on the freeway over the course of, like, five years, three different accidents. You're kidding me. Was nah. were, you, were you in half time at the time? Um. I can't remember if it was then or right before then. No, I think no. It was before half done. Interesting. That's that's crazy, dude. Yeah. So, so like, were those accidents bad enough to like put you in the hospital or something? Or no, I thought I was fine. Just like walked away, like no problem, like just drove yeah. off type thing. <laughs> yeah, first time like I was hit so hard, my, I had a Ford Thunderbird. In the trunk, ended up in like the back seat. <laughs> really? And, you know, yeah. And but still, I felt fine. I was just like, yeah, I'm fine. I'm good. And then a couple other times it was more minor, but you know, first thing the doctor said when he saw the MRI was like, you were in a car accident, weren't you? Yeah, three of them. 
Interesting. So, anyhow, took care of that. Took care of that. Now you're back. I'm back. You can talk now. <laughs> For some reason, you couldn't talk then, or something, or you like. Oh yeah, because they go through like your throat, and so your that's vocal right. Cords, you had they a... move it all over. You're kidding! Like they move your vocal cords over? Yeah, it's like slide everything out of the way. Crazy. And you still talk the same, and you like can you sing and stuff? I don't sing. That's your job, man. I'm just wondering. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I would be worried, dude, if I had to have that, and I was like, dude, they're gonna do what to my vocal cords? Yeah. Like, what's what's gonna happen? They're gonna do what? They're gonna move them the side. They're gonna move them. They're gonna slide them to the side, and then they're just gonna hope that they cruise back and yeah. go back and to they, the way they were normally. Yeah, and they don't tell you that till the day you're at the hospital. Mm -hmm. Oh, by the way, we gotta slide some stuff over. So when no. you're out of here, you won't be able to talk for a couple of weeks. And when I talk again, will I be able to talk like properly or, you know what I mean? Like I yeah. would be wor I would be worried, but yeah. yeah, it's, it's all good, man. I'm glad to have you back. Glad to see everything's good. And, and you're, uh, and you're doing, uh, and you're doing well now. How's your, uh, how's your back feeling? How's everything feeling? All good. Good, man. That's good. Yeah. Kids, uh, giving you a rest. They're not trying to jump on you and shit. Oh, yeah, they know not to do that anymore. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> right on, man. So so what have you been doing lately, dude? You've been uh, you've been writing some songs. I got a couple of them here I want to show everybody. Actually, I got the videos. So I sang on a couple of these, and I got the videos. But um, So you've been writing. You've been uh, – what, what else have you been doing on, on the on the downtime of this, uh, you know, of this surgery? Um, well, surgery happened the same time as the pandemic, so – not working, staying home, still not working. Every now and then I get a little couple of jobs come in, uh, video editing stuff. Right. So stuff where I can just sit here and get stuff Dropbox to me and go ahead and upload it to Vimeo or whatever. So pretty much just a little of that and just doing music. Got to do something to you know stay sane in these crazy times. Mm-hmm. So I gotta ask. Yeah, drink that milk first, buddy. <laughs> this. <laughs> Don't choke. These cinnamon rolls are good. Oh man. You didn't send any over for your guests, man. That's rude. Ah. Well, if you would have showed up in studio today. <laughs> You'd have, you'd have some cinnamon rolls. <laughs> but, uh, nope. Skype it is. Yep. Anyway, I love you. I'm, I love you either with a video or sitting right here next to me. Doesn't matter. Anyway, so so how did you meet? Okay, so we recorded one of these. The re most recent one was My Forward Heart, right? Yeah. Uh, we recorded this with Bob Varro. How did you meet Bob? Like, how did you get in touch with Bob? Okay, so being in the video production field. By the way, so Bob I, I just Bob, so oh. Bob Bar, Bob Varro was a Belgian producer who worked on a, the My Forward Heart, and he was also uh, he he also helped produce the the um, some of Hell Yeah's work as well as uh, you know uh, you know quite a quite a few other really amazing things. He's actually uh, got an episode on the Listening Room in season two towards the beginning. I'll go check out Bob Varro. But anyway, how'd you meet Bob? So through my video production work, I met and worked with this producer who did a lot of um, like MTV shows and reality stuff. He's a good friend of mine. And so he called me one day and said, hey, this producer friend of mine, um, he's from Belgium. He's out here in L.A. He needs a vocalist. Do you know anybody? And I said, of course, Eddie Booz. Who else? So, so that was, um, wait, Raj called you? Yeah, Raj. Gotcha. So Raj and I have been friends like a long time, almost as long as I've known you. Gotcha. So, uh, so he called and made the connection, talked to Bob, gave him your contact info, and and that was he, it. Like you were just a go between. Yeah. Like I thought you like somehow yeah. met and knew Bob. No, it's just a go between, and then from that point on, we started talking. And yeah. then he. He had me do his lyric video for his last one of his last singles, and um, 
So then it was like, hey, come and be on my track and please produce it. Nice, nice. Yeah, dude, you know what's funny is that I was on these songs and um, until last night, I had never seen these videos. I didn't even know this was Good like a friend, thing. man. Don't check out my shit. Dude, you didn't even show. Where, where am I supposed to see them? Like, I, I like. I, I put on Instagram and stuff. A little. I didn't see them on Instagram. Did not see them on Instagram. A little icons that said, check out the link in bio. But it's okay. You know, whatever. <laughs> I, I, I knew you could check out the song. I didn't even know there was a video. Just post the video <laughs> itself somewhere so we can see that there's a video. It was on Facebook. But you're you know not what? that that just makes me realize that none of us are marketing our shit as well as we should. I should be posting on Instagram like every day. Like I'm live every Tuesday and Thursday night. Live every Tuesday and Thursday night. I should be beating it into people's, you know, beating it into people's mentalities that of, you know, what my, 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 my what my marketing is, you know? It's and I'm not doing that, you know, because I, because I, I don't want to spam people with my stuff, you know, which yeah. I guess is one thing. But you know what? Like, just saturation is also, you know, there's also something to be said for saturation too. Oh, I yeah. see Starbucks on every corner. Well, you know, why do you think that is? You know, mm -hmm. every time I look up, I see a fucking Nike swoosh somewhere. So, oh, okay, why do you think that is? You know, saturation. You know, we got to do b both of us, man. So. Yeah, and you, I started I started a separate Facebook page because I had my personal one, and then I did a Kenny Da Finga um, one once I started doing this music, just so KDF. people could go there. Yeah, and then um, I've promoted you on there too. Nice man. Well, I'll promote you on my channel just like I'm doing right now. Love you, Ken. Well, look, dude, you made these these videos, these lyric videos for these, or one of them is a lyric video, one of them is just kind of a... Uh, um, it's anime it's, with some lyrics pop up a couple of times, just, I don't know. All right, let's check out the first one. My f what first one was King for a Day, right? Yeah. All right, let's check out King for a Day, and um, yeah, let's enjoy that.
Same with some of the. Oh. Yes, dude. KDF 2020. I love it, dude. Good stuff, man. Mm-hmm. So, hey, so how, how, so how exactly did you make that video? I, I, I watched that last night as I was kind of prepping it, and I was pretty impressed, dude. Like, I was really, really damn impressed. How did you, how did you do that? Well, um, you know, I was trying to think when we did that song. It's like, okay, I want to do a video, but I don't want to do the same old videos everyone's doing remotely with Zooms or Skype. I was like, what can I do? So I do a lyric video, and then um, my son loves that. All that footage is from anime called Tokyo Ghoul. And so he watches a bunch of stuff, and I saw that one series with him, and I said, there's some cool stuff in here I think would really work. So, you know, talking to my 13-year-old and just say, hey, you know, I need to get some footage, you know, where's this? And then he's like, hey, dad, go to Fiverr. There's guys on there that edit anime videos like cheap. <laughs> That's cool. So so I went there and there's, you know, different prices. So I just find the cheapest one. I'm like, I, I'm an editor. I don't need you to edit. Just collect uh, Tokyo Ghoul footage for me, you know, and I float the kids some money and then put in a Dropbox and then just sat at home. Cut it together, added effects, added the text. You're like, hey, I, I, so. I don't need you to edit. I just need you to do the illegal part for me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> and there's something with anime There's that um, maybe because it's, you know, comes from Japan and Tokyo, Korea, they're not as strict as. So, footage. like, copyright, like, uh, same, copyright yeah, policies take, aren't exactly the same. Yeah. If you take scenes from different episodes and cut it together, they don't go after you. <laughs> interesting so i was like you know i did all that research and it's like okay i'm gonna do this for my first video i was wondering if they were gonna copy strike this this episode because of that (laughs) it's been on for since april now on youtube so we're good (laughs) all right dude we're good dude that's cool no that was a really cool uh concept dude And, and like uh how did you get the lyrics to like you know do its animation and stuff that's just um, in Adobe Premiere glitch effects. Oh, really? Just there's some presets you can download and just mess with certain ones and tweak them a little. Nice, man. So pretty easy stuff. I, well, for me, I, you know, been doing editing for a while. Are you um, writing another, any other songs right now? Yeah, I got one um, done, the music. Well, most of the music. I'm trying to, on this one, do bring some more people in. I'm not going to say who. Okay. But, uh, you'll be stoked. Cool. Well, let's do and it. I'm going to need your vocals again. Cool. Let's do it. I got, um, yeah. I talked to uh, Doug earlier, uh-huh. and he's going to be on the listening room. Cool. So I'm going to get him. Uh, we're actually talking about when. Um, we've actually been talking about what what day I'm going to be able to get him on. So we're talking about DJ Product, actually, who was was with Doug uh, was with Brad when he wrote Garden Grove. You know they, you know he he was in Head PE. He played with didn't he? No, he's in Cottonmouth. Yeah, he was in Cottonmouth right Kings right now. That's what I thought. I think I thought he was yeah. play, playing with KMK right now. And he's done a lot of art oh work. his artworks. He's a great his artist. Art, he's done. That's what I have on the flyer. I have. You know, uh, legendary DJ and artist. Yeah, he's done a ton of stuff for Sublime. Yeah, I mean, when I was in Head, our a lot of our first shows were with Sublime. It was because of the connection with him. It was because of Doug. Yeah. So we did like at least six shows with Sublime. That's dope. Right when they were taking. That's dope. It's crazy. So when you were in Head, that's that's when you guys played like six shows with Sublime. Yeah. That's cool, dude. That's cool. where where where'd you guys play those shows? Um, one of them was right in Long Beach. Uh, the hotel that had the ballroom. I'm blanking out on it. Right there, Second Street and PCH. Um, the best, the best Western, right there. No, across the way that used to be there. I don't think it's there anymore. Wait a minute, the Golden Sales. Golden, Golden Sales. Yeah, that's the best. That's the at black. the Best Western. I thought that was across the way. Nah, it's right there. It's across from Tantalum. That's right. The be- the Golden Sales is like inside the Best Western. 
Okay. That's the whole tell it is now. Maybe that's, I don't know, maybe it wasn't then. It was the beach side, and it was a two-story. Wait, it's where we had our last half-ton show, too. We did that outdoor thing. The Seaport Marina Hotel? That was it, yeah. No kidding? That place. That place. Uh, place was it was there. Saatchi's. Okay. It used to be, but it wasn't Saatchi's before that. It was something before that. I can't remember what it was called. It's so long ago. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah, dude. I remember exactly. I played there one time when I was with uh, Mr. Know It All. And we. we yeah, actually, I have the flyer up on. Someone just sent it to me crazy like last month, and it's up on my um, Kenny DeFinga Facebook nice. page. Nice. When you guys played with Sublime? Yeah, there. How was that? It was crazy from what I remember, but do you have any back then there was back then there was a lot of uh drinking and stuff, so my memories are fuzzy. Are they? <laughs> yeah. Especially when you're hanging with Sublime. Sure, sure, I can imagine, so, you know. All right. So yeah, we played there and we played um I think Anaheim, we played a few shows in San Diego. Nice, dude. That's super cool. So, and that was when Sublime well, Irvine Meadows, we did a big thing called Independence Day. With Irvine at Irvine nice. Meadows, it was like corn was there. I think that flyer I have up on that Facebook page too. You can see all the crazy bands that went on to be big. That's dope. Yeah. Fun times. Back yeah, then. they don't. They don't. It's it ain't like that anymore. So music is not like the way it used to be. So in the eighties and the nineties, even up uh, up until I would say maybe like the mid nineties. That was like the the last hurrah for like record labels signing people for you know big uh, you know yeah. for like for like big deals. After that, it was over. Um, yeah. You know, it was funny. Like everybody, <laughs> like Metallica was out there, you know, saying, "Oh, Napster's bad because it's gonna screw the screw the artists, and you know, it's not gonna you know, and it's, it's not gonna be the same yeah. digital distribution. It's not gonna be the same, you know." It's going to kill everything as far as the music industry goes. And no one listened. Everybody thought, oh, it's just a better way for people to, for more people to get your, your music. And I will uh -huh. say that it opened up a lot of doors for the independent artists. It made it yeah. really possible for independent artists to get their stuff um, out if they want to. If they really, really want to and you start marketing yourself as an independent artist, you can make it happen. You know what I mean? Yeah. But... Uh, now that and now while that didn't exist back then in the di in the digital you know before the digital distribution age so much, uh, I will still say that all the stuff that happened with digital di distribution, um, it, meaning when they made it just so accessible to get you know uh, all this music, well record labels stopped signing people at you know for. You know, for a while, actually, I didn't want to stop signing people. They just stopped giving people like it stopped being the the age of rock stars. You that you weren't, you know, getting huge checks to get signed by a record label anymore. Now the record yeah. label was looking at your online presence. The record label would 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 sign you if you already had a million followers. You know, if you already were selling albums. You know, they didn't. They weren't interested in d developing artists anymore. They weren't interested in getting bands that they thought this is a great band. We can develop these guys, or we can put these guys out. You know, whatever. You know, however they want to do it. That 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 right. that died in like the late '90s. Like totally died. As soon as the internet, as soon as it, it, like the the internet became prevalent, and you could download music, and music was you could get any music anywhere. Record labels became they weren't as necessary. You know, they weren't as necessary to bringing music to the public, you know? So, I don't know, man. I mean, there's a, there's, 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 there's two sides to that coin. Like, you know, like, like we talked about, there's, there's the side of it made it easy for artists like us. But then again, it took away, it, you know, the whole, you know, rock star kind of like instant rock star status possibility where a, a record label is going to go into a club and see you. See, like we're talking about here, like you said, Corn, Sublime, all these bands went on to become big, right? Well, that was yep. because, uh, like, uh, A and R representatives at, at these record labels were seeing all these bands play together, and seeing, oh, this band's good, let's get this band. Oh, this band's good, let's get this band. But they don't do that anymore. When was the last time you seen yeah. a show where A and R representatives were at and signed a band and picked a band up? Right. Literally twenty years ago. 
You know, yeah. I mean, I can't think of I can't think of one. You know, I mean, I can't think of any band that has come out in the last twenty years or twenty five years, really. That yeah, I'd say twenty that that has had you know that has that has had it like that that has come out like that. You know. Yeah, now it's like everything's YouTube. Yeah, and you got see see the news. So many artists being signed from there. Yep, and you can make your own, um, you know, and you can make your own success on on YouTube. You know, you can make. You don't even need record labels, you know, anymore. You don't right. even need representation. If you're if you're doing it yourself and you're marketing yourself properly, you can make your you can make a great living online. You know, can can you check this out? So recently, so I have my stuff on TuneCore, right? I have my music on TuneCore. And that puts my music on like Spotify and iTunes and Amazon and all the websites that I want it on. But recently, I put all of my albums, even the ones that aren't on TuneCore, I took all of my albums and I put them on EddieBooze.com. Uh-huh. And I started, I started making more money in the first month than I did all of last year from, from the albums that I had on TuneCore. Just by go, going on live on YouTube all the time. And telling people, all, all my music's available on eddieboos.com. eddieboos.com slash store, and you guys can get all of my albums. You, uh-huh. you know what I'm saying? I'm almost said the answer. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm being interrupted by a kid. No worries. I'm on, I'm on live. <laughs> okay. I told you I'm on my call. You guys are awesome. <laughs> <laughs> that's Yeah, that's Eddie. Right on. Jared, want to say hi? Tell Jared. Yes, we're Tell alive. Tell Jared. I say hi. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hi, Jared. He's uh, he's 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 blurry, peeking in the background. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> all right. So, uh, <laughs> all right. Well, <laughs> nah, man. But I, you know, it's funny. Like always, growing up, I always wanted to, you know, be a rock star and get signed by a record label, and then. I, you know, and as soon as I was 18 years old, everything was like uh, changing. Everything started changing, like right around the time I was like 18, 19, 20. You know, and I was like, "What the hell? What's going on?" You know what I mean? Like, can't do that no more. So, just trying to figure it out, man. You know, and the same thing happened this last year with all the lockdowns. It's like everything I've worked for my whole life, they've just uh, well, at least the state of California has deemed non-essential. You know, as far as artists go, we're bottom of the barrel as far as essential. You know, as far as being deemed essential goes in this, you know, in this, uh, you know, in this puzzle here. You know, <laughs> nice. <laughs> hey, that's not a bad idea, actually. It's actually a really. That's that, a great you idea. Got this, he got this room divider from his uncle for his, when he's doing his streaming for his gaming. That's a great idea. <laughs> Dude, I need one of those. That's actually a really I'm good sorry. idea. Yep. Ah, <laughs> oh, your son's so thoughtful. Stage, my stage hand. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, yeah, but 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 here's the thing. We have to adapt. You know, we have to learn to adapt, you know, so... You know, that's why I've been online. And to be honest with you, I'm thinking about making a second channel for streaming. Because I've talked to a couple other YouTubers recently, and I've found out that when when all this lockdown stuff started happening, some of the people I know started streaming too. And mm-hmm. YouTubers from anywhere between like 5,000 subscribers to 185,000 subscribers, they all noticed the same thing. The moment they all started streaming live, YouTube started throttling their 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 views and the algorithm. They started throttling back, showing their you know showing their videos in the search engines. You know, it was really really weird. A lot of people just you know a lot of the YouTubers I've been talking to all noticed it. I noticed that I've even been in contact with YouTube about it recently. I actually I actually have an email from them I haven't read yet about this very thing. My viewership got cut in half. My subscribers got cut in half. The the oh, the, the 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 punk rock um, the punk rock uh, covers that I normally post that normally get tens of thousands of views, if not hundreds of thousands of views, started getting hundreds of views, maybe and maybe a couple thousand views. You know what I mean? Like they just started choking my channel when I started going live. I think they're afraid you're going to say something. You know, I think they're they mm. I think they're afraid you're going to say something that they don't want you to say. You know. YouTube is well, but YouTube's you know censored. I mean, was, just go look. I mean, YouTube censored so much, and, and and in fact, case in point, um, there were 
about six different listening room episodes that YouTube literally took offline altogether because they because my guest said the word coronavirus. Oh, uh-oh, this was going to come down now. He said it. He should have said the Whatever. C word. Whatever. I'll have to then I'll have to <laughs> do the exact same thing that I did before, which is um ask them, you know, have them manually review it. That's ridiculous. Oh, you think? <laughs> now, 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 oh, now you think it's ridiculous. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, yeah, it's ridiculous, yeah. Ken. It's it's been ridiculous. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, yeah, but that, that's that's the point. You know, it's like, you know, we I'm I'm trying to change and adapt, and I'm trying to bring people live music or or something different, and and even that gets throttled. You know what I'm saying? Even that, even my my content gets throttled. So I'm thinking about doing a split. Uh, splitting this channel in two, doing another channel, doing like Eddie Boo's live channel, you know what I mean, where I put mm-hmm. the listening room on and maybe I do, um, and maybe I do like all my live shows on that, you know, so, I, so I'm so i not being, uh, being dinged on this channel for, you know, for, uh, you know, for any of the live streams that I do anymore, I mean, for any of the live streams that I do, so I can just start posting my videos again, my, my, my original videos and cover videos on the other channel, on this channel, and maybe they'll unthrottle me, you know, who knows, Yeah. but it's all good either way, and I don't, I don't say nothing about nothing on this channel, but, but positivity and music, you know what I'm saying, that's all I want to, it's all I want to talk about here, you know, I just want to talk about music, I want to talk about, you know, positive things, bring people a smile to their face for an hour a day, you know, uh, five minutes a day, you know, and uh, I don't want to, I don't, like, this isn't the place to come for Clown World. If you want to fucking go to Clown World, go to fucking Clown World, you know what I'm saying? Don't come here yeah. for Clown World. If you're an asshole and you feel the need and it drives your everyday spirit and Clown World is the thing you live for and you feel the need to post all about it, go to your fucking local... Go to your go to your local news outlet, where you read about Clown World, and post it there. We don't want it here. Fuck off. Right. Not and you know I'm obviously not talking to you. I'm just talking to anyone who wants to enter enter the you know the positive you know the positive premises and piss on everything. You know what I'm saying? You want to come on? You know you you know I, we had it last night. To be honest with you, dude. We, uh, last night we had a live stream, and at the end of the live stream we like to do this thing called chat song. And mm-hmm. and it's where I will sing whatever they put in the chat. People enjoy it. It's fun. It's funny. You know what I mean? Like people will, you know, just write in, you know, funny phrases. And I'm singing the song. And I'm singing and I sing whatever is in the chat. I think you've seen it. You've, you've seen chat song. Yeah. I, yeah. yeah I participated. You participated in chat song. Well, you know, yeah. uh, uh, it's recently there's been a, it, you almost can't get away from it. There's been somebody one or two people who have to interject some sort of nasty political statements. You know what I mean? And they just can't (laughs) have a good time. You know what I'm saying? You know, and to be honest with you, it's, it's, to be honest with you, every single time it's been someone on the left. I'm a, I'm, I'm a constitutional libertarian, Kenny. And I don't, I'm sick. I don't, I don't subscribe to either think like me cult, you know? So uh, Mm -hmm. don't try and force your beliefs on me and we're going to be just fine. But the, but also, it's always the fucking lefties, dude. It's always those rabid fucking lefties. They can't, they can't, they they just can't keep it out. Out, no conservatives, never anybody on the right. It's always the people on the left. I don't know what it is, man. They just can't get their shit together. Apparently, I don't know. But it's it's that they live in clown world. It's that that's where they reside all times, and they can't even have two hours where we can just have some music, have some have some fun. You know what I'm saying? Enjoy enjoy each other's company. You know. Sorry, I got a little, you know, I got a little like uh, peeved about that, but I'm just, it just, it's, it's, it's annoying, dude. It's fucking annoying, you know. And uh, yeah, I don't. Talk. That's why I, I've said on like my Facebook, I don't talk religion or politics yeah, at all. Dude, because... leave it the fuck at home. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, why do you think nobody's yeah, watching? I'm, I'm down the why middle. do you think nobody's watching sports anymore? <laughs> why do you think nobody watches sports? Because they're shoving it down your throats there too. I'm. I, mm-hmm. This is channel is not about that. This channel is about music, positivity, gratitude. So leave it out. Go somewhere else with it. Leave it at home. I know. I I'm, I know. Got a little. You know. A little more. We could talked about it a little more than you know than I wanted to. But to be honest with you, I don't care. I'm just like, like I said. It's it's you know it's it's annoying. You know. Go leave it at home. We're trying to bring something positive here. You know. Yeah. Okay. Bring it back to the music. That's right. <laughs> bring it back to the music. 
In fact, let's go listen to uh, my forward heart. So, so you go, so you got Bob on this one, right? Yeah, I did. I tracked guitars and bass and wrote it to a loop, and then sent it off to him, and he retracked guitars and stuff. And you know, I had just a basic bridge, and he expanded that too. He did a killer job, and so when Bob, so, yeah, this is more of a cl collaboration than. The first one was like really me. The first one took me a year because I'm not a good guitarist. I'm the first one to admit that. It was a lot of editing. Like if you saw the timeline, it's just like cut, 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 paste, paste, you know. And then this one, I did the roughs and then sent it to him and he like, so yeah, it's more of a collaboration. Bob did a killer job on this, dude. Yeah. But Bob's got great guitar tones too, mm -hmm. you know, um... And yeah, he actually threw a lot of a lot of different layers in this. I remember when you sent me back the first <laughs> the first copy, there were a lot of layers in there. Yeah. I was like, "Whoa." I was like, there's a lot in here. And uh I think he very very tastefully mixed this in, made this right and kind of kicked this off and made and made it awesome. So, let's check this out. Uh so you wrote this and then sent off, sent the lyrics off, I sent the music to Bob. Bob elaborated on the guitars. You guys sent it to me. I wrote the lyrics for it, and uh, we yeah. came up with. And Bob also programmed the drums on this. Too. Oh, did he? Yeah. Nice. Okay, so we're gonna listen to My Forward Heart.
Kenny, you're a fucking gangster, dog. That 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 <laughs> song is the shit, bro. You wrote a good tune, dude, and Bob did a great job there um, pr uh, producing that. I really enjoy. Um, I really enjoy Bob's work in general too, dude. And I was really stoked yeah. to work with you and Bob on the same tune because I had worked with Bob before. Right. And um, can I can I at least ask is Bob going to be involved in the next tune? Um, not sure yet. Not positive yet, but you do have some somebody okay. that you've spoken with. Yeah. yeah. A few people. All right, I'm going to mute you, and then you're going to tell me who. All right, uh, you're muted. Go ahead. Really? Okay. Shit. I'm down. Well, all right. Cool. All right. I'm, I'm, all right. You're you're unmuted now, Kenny. So okay. So nobody can hear. So now everybody can hear. Uh, what you were gonna say? So I'll just tell everybody what you just said. So it's gonna be. Uh, I'm just kidding. <laughs> They probably read my lips. <laughs> I know. I thought, I thought the same uh -huh. thing. I just like, you should have just covered your mouth. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But, uh, uh, dude, I fucking love it, man. I'm looking forward to, to doing another tune with you like ASAP, bud. I really am. Yeah. All right. Um, this, go ahead. Yeah, this next one, right now, it's got a darker tone. Is it slower? Slower, darker. Okay. Can you give me like a, like no. in the vein of... I don't know. It's I don't know. Hard to describe. I feel you. <laughs> yeah. Well, we were asking Chrome the other night. Everybody was having questions for Mr. Chrome the other night, and they were asking him if he. Uh, they were like, "Hey, uh, uh, what's your genre for your last album?" And he couldn't describe it either. He was like, oh, "Kind of. What do you lady label that? You know? Is it right. so? Is it like? Is it like Slayer? Can? <laughs> no. Is it like Pantera?" <laughs> No, I don't know. It, it's is it like different. I try to make each song a little different than the previous? Just is it like Lincoln Park? Mm -hmm. Well, it does have piano in it. Oh, I'll say that it does have little keys Some in it. A little Ke grand piano. Kenny DeFinger decided to bless us with them fingers. Ah, <laughs> 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 uh, Kenny, I love you. Well, look, my bud. I'm gonna let you go, dude. We're gonna. I'm gonna get on get on the dusty trail here, like my stepdad used to always say. And uh, I'll catch up with you this week, dude. Let's let's get together. Send me send me the rough of the song. We'll go check it out. We'll take a listen, and uh, we'll start getting writing on it. All right. All righty. I, I love you, Ken. I'll talk to you in a little bit, man. Yeah, keep you, man. keep up the health. Give the kids some love for me. You know, give uh, give Elizabeth. You know, m uh, my best as well. And uh, I'll talk to you guys soon. Okay, buddy. All right. All right, you guys. Thank there. you so much for uh, joining me today. I uh, appreciate uh, my guest, Mr. Kenny Sachs, for joining us from Head PE. Uh, and um, again, you guys are amazing. Absolutely love every single one of you guys. Remember, guys, good things happen when you take the time to listen. Thank you all. Love you all. Thanks for being a part of the listening room tonight. My name is Eddie Booz. Go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell notifications and give the video a like. We'll see you guys every Monday through Friday right here at 6.30. Take care. Okay, say bye. Bye. Bye.